The video I'm going to watch today is this, it's called How Do German Schools Teach About World War II? I'm, obviously I'm from the UK, I'm from Britain, and we learn about World War II in school. I guess we learn it, I guess we get just a general overview of the timeline of how it all began, both in the UK and the ally countries, as well as in Germany as well. We just learn about everything and... It seems like fairly even-handed how we how we learn it learn about it as well. Uh, I'm interested to know how it's taught in German schools. Tell me your experience of learning about World War Two in Germany. How did it? How did you learn about it? What was interesting about it? What do you remember uh, specifically about it? But let's watch this video and find out more. After World War II, the German state was utterly destroyed. It was split in four parts, and to top it all, coming face to face with the scale of the atrocities their government and armies committed through public events like the Nuremberg Trials. This, in combination with the process of denazification, which can be seen as a large-scale rehabilitation program, and the regaining of independence, albeit as two states, helped the German people in the 50s to begin looking towards the future, burying the past. It was not just a lost war, which people can accept except while still feeling proud about their deeds during it, as perhaps the French used to view Napoleon's efforts which ended in defeat, or Austria's defeats in the Seven Years' War. Rather, in this case, the sensation after the war seems to have been similar to a person regaining their senses after having committed acts of violence under the influence, akin to a crowd cheering for a football team or other such instances of mob mentality which all humans are susceptible. Naturally, given all the yeah, I guess that's an interesting point, mentioning <clears throat> that it wasn't just a normal war because it wasn't just two countries going to war or groups of countries going to war. Of course, internally, what happened to Jewish people is very, not unique, but it's quite unique, uh, having that, uh, having what happened. Yeah, of course, so it's something that would have taken a big, uh, it's taken a huge change in the country country's mentality straight after that war ends it must have been so hard to change this is like so many millions of people in germany had like this this mentality that today we find kind of i guess repulsive uh, for them to actually change from that and become how the germany is today it's such an amazing turnaround. Germany is one of the most successful countries in the world, one of the greatest countries, so many great innovations, inventions, uh, such an important role in the world. Uh, to come from that in like less than 100 years is, is quite quite amazing such actually. instances of mob mentality which all humans are susceptible. Naturally, given all the revelations after the war and the atrocities committed, the Germans collectively wanted nothing more than to forget and focus on new goals. First the economy, which led to the German economic miracle, and then on the foundation of the European Union, of which in the coming decades it would arguably become the leading country. But sure. what about the history books in school? After all, typical, after any conflict, whether a given side is the winner or the loser, the history taught in schools tends to be coloured to favour one's own people. Mm. This, however, could not happen in Germany. The reasons for this were varied, from making sure something like that couldn't happen again, and of course the scale of the atrocities on a global level and the small time gap that separates us from those events and how well documented those events are. Mm. This brings us to the broad strokes of how this particular conflict was and is taught in German schools. We should point out here that in Germany the education system is regulated not by the federal government but independently in each of the 16 states that constitute the German Federal Republic or BRD. So the way history is taught, although generally falling within the same lines, can vary a lot from region to region. For example, the choice of literature used in the various classes differs greatly not only from year to year but also from federal state to federal state. Mm, that's interesting. Of course I've watched videos before about the German education system and knew it was controlled state by state. But it never really occurred to me that the actual material, the learning material would differ as well. I guess it makes sense, but it makes it interesting when people are like progressing through school and going to university that they may have learned the same subjects, history for example, but what they learned was different, the materials they used were different. That's quite 
quite interesting to me. Tell me if that's interesting to you too. That caveat out of the way, the study of the war period and how this is viewed in German schools can be generally divided into four parts. The first, the Weimar Republic. The Weimar Republic, at least its beginnings, are generally viewed positively. It is seen as a first decent effort towards democratization, despite the problems that it faced in the aftermath of World War I. The various problems culminating in the economic crisis of the late 20s and the subsequent rise of the Nazi regime are dealt with in detail, emphasizing the mistakes that would lead to the fall of the democratic system. One would say that the Weimar Republic, despite the brevity of its existence, is viewed with a certain nostalgic sentiment, accompanied by the looming threat of what was to come. And that is not just the war, but the Nazis themselves and their ideology. Nazi ideology and atrocities. Head on, the students are confronted with the crushing effects of totalitarian regimes, radical ideologies, and where these can lead. In addition to photo and video documentaries, most schools organize mandatory school trips to Holocaust memorials, usually former concentration camps. This does not only apply to history class. Students are also introduced to the works of literature tackling the issue of Nazism and ethnic hate in Europe at the time. This can include, but is not limited to, authors such as Bertolt Brecht and Thomas Mann. Additionally, Jewish voices are amplified in terms of Jewish poetry, reports from survivors, and historical documentaries focusing on the long-term consequences of hate and violence. Some of the literature choices indicate that the schools try to emphasize the aspects of humanity and also the problem of group mentality and prejudice, as seen in works such as the post-war play Andorra by Max Frisch and more recent works such as The Boy in the Striped Pajamas from 2006 by John Boyne and The Reader by Bernhard Schlink. They also look at the diaries of Anne Frank. Excerpts of pro-Nazi texts are also studied once the students are deemed mature enough to handle this. Oh, really? In this vein, excerpts from Mein Kampf are tackled in advanced history class, stressing the contradictions within the text, what contemporary citizens might have identified with, and the lack of morality therein. Interestingly, as if to complement Nazi ideology with a similar type of prejudice, the other major topic focused on intensely is that of slavery, racism, and segregation in America. The war. Yeah, I got to say that the the way they actually learn about it is a very responsible way. Uh, they always say you should look to history to learn learn from it, so that past mistakes never repeat themselves. And it looks like Germany's doing exact exactly that. Really learning everything about that situation, about World War Two, about Nazism, to make sure it doesn't happen again. The trips to the Holocaust Memorial. The concentration camps must be an absolutely ha harrowing experience for young children, but it must also be a something that will stick with them for their life to actually see being that the places that these things happened. It must teach them a lot and must maybe change their personality so they just become good people. But tell me if you've ever been to like a Holocaust memorial, a concentration camp uh, when you were at school. How did that actually feel? How did it feel being with other schoolmates? Did you take it seriously? Did you, uh, was it like something that's really stuck with you? The other part there about learning about the materials that describe the situation, uh, the part that interested me most there was actually learning about the pro-Nazi, from the pro-Nazi sources, sources like Mein Kampf. Uh, tell me if you've ever re read any of them, what you thought about them. I, I like how you had that caveat that, that it's the mature students that are allowed to learn that, which is fair, I think. Uh, they can really appreciate it and take the messages that are going to be positive, or not take the messages from it, but uh, take positivity from it, or take good things from it, and yeah, again, learn from the past. But tell me if you've ever read any of those sort of pro-Nazi things as well. Itself. Remarkably, the details of the fields of war are often underplayed in German schools. A possible reason for this is that showing maps of expanding German territory during the first two years of the war and discussing their winning battles might cause encouragement of nationalistic pride, which seems counterproductive to many given the points that educators are trying to teach. Hmm. Furthermore, the discussion of the details of each battle that Rommel won or lost in Africa or 
the supply problems on the Eastern Front are not vital to the analysis of the atrocities of the Nazi regime. Another more practical aspect is that already much time has been allocated to the subject of war anyway, so they cut down on the actual battles. Of course, one downside of de-emphasizing this is many German students are never really made aware of many specific military events and conquests. Since most emphasis in school is put on the internal developments, theoretical or philosophical aspects, and of course on the ideology and practice of ethnic cleansing and the ruthlessness to other groups of people seen as ethnic, cultural, or political outcasts such as Jews, homosexuals, communists, etc., the result is that the military developments of war are understated as alluded to. The result is that, shockingly, many German students are actually surprised to learn things like that Germans invaded places like modern Ukraine, modern Serbia, and Greece. In contrast to these broader war strokes, resistance against the Nazi regime within Germany is heralded as an example of heroism and bravery, one such example being the siblings Sophie and Hans Scholl, members of the resistance group the White Rose. Such examples allow German students to find figures from the wartime with whom they can identify with. On this note, not every regular German who lived in the 1930s and 40s is painted as a terrible person. After all, when dealing with such a large group, as in any populace, there are plenty of good people and a percentage mm. of bad. Definitely. That said, given all that happened, a large emphasis is put on even most of the good people being complicit in the atrocities by looking away and not doing anything to stop it. Yeah, so that's interesting as well. That's something that's a big difference between how it's taught in the UK and Germany. Obviously, he's talking here about in Germany that it's more about the humanity side of things. Uh, whereas in the UK, we did learn about individual battles and individual battles that we won and things like that. Uh, so interesting there. And also interesting how he talked about talking about the, the good people at the time, which of course there was people who never believed in Nazism at the time, I'm sure. Uh, tell me if you have any like family members who were alive during that time, like grandparents or great grandparents, they you've ever spoken to about that time, and tell me what their opinions were, how they thought about it. I would really love to know, like, more specific stories and how it affected people. Uh, yeah, tell me if, if you know anybody. Defeat in post-war. The major destructions in Germany and the high cost of human lives during the war is not attributed to the Allies, but rather to the Nazi regime itself, which is being viewed as the perpetrator in starting an unnecessary war in the first place. Furthermore, most of the destruction on German soil was inflicted in the last year of the war. The obstinacy of not surrendering, even as it was clear that the outcome of the war would be negative, is seen as proof of the minimal care the Nazis expressed toward their own people. The suicide of members of the party, such as Himmler and Hitler himself, is seen as an act of cowardice on their part. Thus, rather unique in history, the opposing forces who were victorious are not generally seen in a negative light by those they defeated. Yeah. Far from it. That on that note, unique. the occupation of the German cities by the Allied army is characterized as liberation. This is despite, of course, the fact that the Allied soldiers at the time didn't seemingly view the race to Berlin as a race to free Berlin. The choice of words, however, comes with the emphasis that by losing the war, the German people were freed from Nazism. An interesting example comes from alternative history broadcasts that contemplate a world after supposed German victory. These paint a horrific dystopia in which the Germans, as well as the occupied people, would be suppressed by a ruthless Nazi regime. The 8th of May is therefore known as the Day of Liberation. Making parallels to the way the European Renaissance supposedly liberated the medieval people, the liberation, as well as the denazification process, led to an internal catharsis among Germans concerning Nazism. Reflecting all of this in popular German cinema, German war films, especially in the last few decades, tend to deal with the subject with honesty, showing the gradual shift to madness caused by hollow mass delusions, often in a tone more fatalistic than heroic. Death. Yeah, tell me if there's any like German war movies like that were produced in Germany about World War II that are worth watching, that are interesting to watch. Uh, one thing I thought about when it was talking more about the education side of things, like was there anybody you knew in school who like, did become inspired by, by things like this, learning about Nazism? Was there anybody that, like, you know, like, were proud of Germany's uh, Nazism and things like that that you knew of? And how did that, how did they, how did that, how was that handled? Uh, yeah. 
for. They can be much deeper than a typical war movie. And if you're up for that, you might enjoy work such as the Generation War miniseries. There's Sorry. also the movie The Fall, perhaps mostly known thanks to the most memeified Hitler scene ever. Yeah, yeah, of I've course, one, one major issue of all this and the way it's taught in schools and extreme emphasis placed on this period of history is the subject of imposed collective responsibility on modern Germans, even if just implied or felt, rather than ever explicitly stated. At first glance, it is good to study these events in great detail to make sure they don't happen again. However, an issue for Germans, of course, is the sense of collective responsibility, despite no student today, or their parents, or even potentially their grandparents, having anything to do with any of that. How much weight does the idea of original sin have? How is a person born in the 2000s responsible for the Nazi atrocities? It is still heavily frowned upon to display the modern-day German flag, despite officially and explicitly not being a Nazi symbol. On a similar note, a nationalistic display such as pledging allegiance to the flag during class every morning would have the worst possible connotations in Germany, despite being common in places like the United States. Furthermore, there is a high percentage of population with immigrant heritage. Just look at the German national football team. As you might expect from all of this, there is some concern that the German school systems may go too far with the seeming obsession with the Nazis and all the mistakes that they were making, instead of spending more time on broader history, as is more typical in other nations. Whatever one's opinion on that, as an interesting little side note, the German denazification process was considered such a success that decades later Americans sought to apply the same methodology after occupying Iraq. Unsurprisingly, that was not exactly successful. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. Yeah, so I'll put the link uh, to that video in the description. Sorry about the darkness here, it's just got like very dark outside my window there's like a thunderstorm coming but very interesting video great to learn more about what germans learn about world war ii very complex of course but it seems like they're learning about it in a very responsible and mature way uh trying to take as much lessons from it as possible facing it head on and yeah just really like learning about so much so it doesn't happen again Tell me what you think about it. Tell me how you learned about it. Tell me if you agree with everything uh, that was mentioned in this video. Uh, thanks for watching.